Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen and today I'm talking about a stack of books that I think are all gonna be five star reads for me. I feel like I'm very dialed into my taste and what I'm gonna like. I save certain books like those in the stack for when I like really want a five star read and so I guess we'll see in a future video. I think I'm gonna read all of these this year so I will you know check in on the stack and see whether I was correct about my prediction. But yeah, before I go into the stack, I will share what I'm drinking today. Oh, and I should mention, if you're looking behind me and seeing how like insane my bookshelves are, including like I'm stacking books in front of books. No, you didn't, you did not see it. Um, yeah, anyways, so today I'm drinking something different. It is a canned cocktail variety on this channel. Put some cut water, sorry for the ring light glare. It's a tequila Paloma, it has 1.5 shots of cut water tequila, grapefruit soda, and I guess that's it. Love a Paloma, love not having to make a cocktail. I saw this, where did I see this? I told a wine and I picked it up and I've had it before, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. It's really nice for like convenience. Summer vibes for sure with those, but I mean, it is January, but we love we love tequila. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's get into the stack. So first I have Maggie Nelson's Bluets. And I haven't done my wrap up yet, so I haven't talked about another Maggie Nelson book that I read this month, but I read Jane by Maggie Nelson and I absolutely loved it. It was my first five star read of the year. And CJ from CJ Reads recommended I ch uh, check out Bluets. And I guess it's like, I don't really know too much. I know it's kind of like an ode to the color blue, but I think it's a reflection on grief. I could be totally wrong, but I think Maggie Nelson from what I've read so far, she's incredible and so, I'm very excited for this. This is like definitely a one sitting read. I guess it's told in like paragraphs or vignettes that are all numbered. So it should be pretty quick, but yeah, I guess we'll see. Next, I have The Third Hotel by Laura Vandenberg. If you've watched my channel at all, you know that I absolutely stan Laura Vandenberg just from one collection, and that is I Hold a Wolf by the Ears. I've been recommending it to everyone, and so I have her most recent novel. And I'm really excited to see how she writes novels, I guess, based on how strong her short stories are. For some of these, I don't even know what they're about, but a lot of the times, like, I just know based on word of mouth or, like, authors that I vibed with or recommendations from other authors, whether I think something's gonna be five stars. So this one is about a woman named Claire, recently widowed, arrives in Havana, Cuba to attend the annual festival of new Latin American cinema, a trip planned by her late husband, Richard, a horror film, film scholar. Known with grief, yet longing for insight into her husband's mind, Claire goes to the film Richard believed would be groundbreaking, and in a way, it is. The next day, she sees Richard standing outside the Museum of the Revolution. He is wearing a white linen suit and he's supposed to be dead. I mean, bitch, first of all, Laura Vandenberg. Second of all, horror films. Third, the ghost story, like, grief, like, me, all day. Guarantee it'll be five stars. Watch me be wrong. Next, so I have a memoir here. And I was, like, hesitant to put memoirs in the stack because I feel kind of weird about rating memoirs. I don't know, like, displaying really personal things in in a book and so I feel a little weird but I put I think two memoirs in the stack that I just think I'm really gonna enjoy overall yeah I don't know if that makes sense but the first one I have is Memorial Drive by Natasha Trethaway I know that she is a Pulitzer Prize winner for poetry and this memoir um, discusses her mother who was killed by her stepfather I believe when she was 19 and I've only heard incredible incredible things about this one I I'm really excited to check it out. I actually, so I started this book like three months ago, I wanna say, and I read like the first 10 pages and I just wasn't in the right headspace for it because it was so beautiful and so well written that I was like, you know what? I'm gonna table it from when I like feel really in the mood to fully appreciate the writing and at the time I wasn't, I forget why, but um, yeah, I'm excited to come back to this because I can already tell from those first 10 pages, but be very sad, so I guess we'll see. Next I have The Pisces by Melissa Broder. I've talked about this book a lot on my channel. I've been meaning to read it for so long. And actually, I think it was two months ago-ish, I read her personal essay collection called So Sad Today, which I really um, enjoyed. I thought she's a really funny, darkly comedic writer, and I'm really excited to see her novel, um, how they are. I actually have both The Pisces and Milk Fed um, as five-star prediction, just based on that essay collection alone. I really liked it. And she kind of goes into like very, um, dark topics following female narrators, which is something I always look for in fiction. And given her like darkly comedic writing, I think it's gonna be very strong. And so I'm excited for both. I guess we'll see if they're both five stars for me, but yeah, I'm really confident I'm gonna like these at the very least. Next, I have Things We Lost in the Fire, a short story collection by Mariana Enriquez. And this one, 
came onto my radar because Laura Vandenberg in a podcast or something, again, I stan, she was talking about how this collection was very influential for I Hold the Wolf by the Ears. And I mean, that's, you know, I was sold right away. And I guess these are very like creepy, um, contemporary short stories that are odd and out there. And that's something that I'm always looking for. So I'm very excited to see what this is all about and see if I pick up on anything that might have, that might have influenced Laura Vandenberg's book because I love that one. So yeah, love short stories, excited for this. For sure. To sneeze. <coughs> Fun times. Okay. Next, I have Hysterica by Jessica Gross. And there's one reason why I think this is going to be a five star prediction, and that is a blurb I read in the back. I am a sucker for a blurb. I don't know if you all are, but I mean, I wish I wasn't so easily persuaded by blurbs because sometimes, I don't know, they haven't like steered me in the wrong direction, but I feel like it shouldn't be the sole <laughs> reason why I pick up a book. I mean, I guess marketing works, but the top blurb says If Otessa Moshpag and Phoebe Waller Bridge painted the town red together, this could be the fictive product of their evening out. Nervy, candid, wet with ink black humor, hysteria, hysteria champions female sexual appetites while also exploring the emotional hunger that leads to self-sabotage. I mean, period. That's really all I know about this book. I guess it's kind of like weird and so it's about this woman who descends into sexual madness apparently. And yeah, if you compare it to Moshpeg, I'm going to read it. So hypes for this. Love the French flaps. The cover is very off-putting as well. If you flip it, she looks a little unhinged maybe? I guess we'll see. But I'm excited for this one. Next, I have an essay collection called Night Rooms by Gina Nutt. And this one comes out March 23rd this year. And this sounds so good. So what I know is it's a collection of personal essays that weaves together fragmented images from horror films and cultural tropes to meditate on anxiety and depression, suicide, body image, identity, grief, and survival. I love horror films. I love personal essays. That combination sold me on this right away. And I'm so happy that the publisher sent me a copy because I was so excited to check this out. I saw this, I think, on like Lit Hub's um, most anticipated 2021 releases. And when I saw that synopsis of horror films and personal essays, I was like, yes, please give it to me right away. So excited for that. Okay, a few more. Okay, here's another memoir that I am very excited about. And that is The Liars Club by Mary Carr. And First of all, I love this Penguin, what is it, deluxe classic edition? Yeah. So I guess this is like a game-changing memoir. I think it was published in the 90s. I actually don't know too much about Mary Carr's past, but my friend on Instagram, Hunter, his handle is at Shelf by Shelf. He stands Mary Carr. I don't really trust his opinion, and yeah, that's basically all I know, but I just get the vibes. And I think I saw Alex from What Page Are You On on BookTube. I think at one point he had said this is one of his favorite books, maybe? And like an older video of his, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm just really excited to see what it's all about and kind of see how it's become a classic memoir. Super stoked, love this cover as well. Very cool. Okay, next I have, this is the one I'm the least sure that's gonna be a five-star read, but I think it might be, I don't know. It is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. I actually won a collection of the Gilead books of which there are four. And basically I think this is gonna be five stars because I've seen rave reviews from so many people, including Alex from Page You On, Matthew Sharapa, Brandon Taylor, author of Real Life, all say that this is just like basically a perfect book. And, you know, going on their opinions alone, I'm very confident I'm going to love this one. I guess the one reason why I'm a little bit nervous is because whenever like a book is centered in or reflecting on like religion or anything related to it, I get a little bit nervous of whether I'm going to really enjoy it fully. But um, I mean, that doesn't, that's not really like a, a bar to me enjoying a book, but it's just something I'm a little bit I'm not as compelled to read books that are centered in that. But yeah, I'm really excited to check it out and hopefully read all four and love them all. But yeah, a little unsure, but I think I'm going to love it. We will see. Okay, finally, I have two books that I am currently reading. And I mean, I'm already into both of them and I'm pretty sure they're going to be five-star reads. But before I even picked them up, I was pretty sure they're going to be five-star reads. And so I will start with this one. It is George Saunders' new book that came out like a week ago. It's called A Swim in a Pond in the Rain. And so this book is so cool and exactly what I was looking for. Like really weird that this book came out right now because I was like actually looking for a book that might be something like this. And so what it is, is George Saunders, he includes, I think, I forget how many stories there are, like seven stories, maybe seven short stories that are um, from Russian writers and he, that are classics so like Leo Tolstoy, Anton Chekhov. So he basically you read the short stories and then George Saunders kind of tells you why he thinks that they work and why they're such great classic stories. And I'm so excited to read this because I have fallen in love, in love with short stories over the last year or so. 
And I'm just so stoked to see how George Saunders, who was a Booker winner, he teaches um, creative writing at Syracuse University, just seeing his clearly brilliant mind, you know, parse through these different stories. And upon falling in love with short stories, I've been really wanting to find something like an essay or a book or something that kind of discusses why short stories work so well, kind of how a short story is good or not. And this book is definitely what I'm looking for. And the first uh, short story that he includes in this collection, he basically gives you a page at a time. So you read one page of the short story and then he goes into like a little brief essay about why that page works, what you're thinking about, where the story's gonna go, what is successful, what questions do you have about the story, what questions he has when he's reading it, and trying to prompt your mind into thinking about why the story is working or not for you. And I thought it's so brilliant. And like, I feel like I'm a student again, which I love that feeling. And George Saunders writes with this very like, um, I don't know, warm, and you can just tell he's having so much fun, like teaching this to the reader. And yeah, it just makes you feel like a little MFA student for a bit. And I'm really excited to get deeper into this one. I'm only about 50 pages in, but I just think it's so, so fun. So what I was looking for at the time and highly recommend it already. If you want to learn more about short stories, if you like feeling like a student, if you like George Saunders, clearly. Yeah, I think it's a really, really great book so far. And then finally, I have Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. I've been really excited about this book for a while now. Um, I follow like Catapult, the publisher on various platforms and I saw this cover and first of all, like Jesus, stunning, but also, I had recently seen reviews from CJ from CJ Reads and Alex from Page One, and they both gave it five stars. And if they both give something five stars, I mean, I'm pretty sure I will too. Um, and yeah, this one is amazing so far. I'm about 100 pages in. And to put it simply, it basically follows an unnamed narrator who snoops through her boyfriend's phone. I think it's on the eve of Donald Trump's inauguration. And she finds out that he's a secret conspiracy theorist on Instagram which leads to her questioning her relationship and it kind of goes from there. But this novel is clearly very millennial and looking at internet culture and social media and the way that we are always kind of putting on a facade and looking at all those different things through this really witty and um, self-aware narrator. And yeah, I really love it so far. I was pretty sure I was gonna love it going into it, just being a smart millennial novel and it's definitely paying off on that front. So. Yeah, unless something goes way off um, in the coming pages, I think it's gonna maintain its status as a five-star read. That about does it. I'm very excited for all of these books. If you have read any of these, let me know if you like them or not. Let me know if you think I'm gonna love them if you have a vibe for my taste. Um, yeah, and I hope if you haven't heard of some of these, I hope you add them to your TBR as well so we can talk about them this year. I'm super stoked. Yeah, I guess I'll follow up this video at some point, kind of going over whether I was right or not. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be right. I have, good, I have good feelings about all of these books, and I'm very excited for all of them, so I guess we'll see. But until next time, I'm going to enjoy my tequila paloma. Cheers.